NASA just discovered life on Mars? What's up with that? David Grinspoon, um, my astrobiologist at large, <laughs> right there at NASA headquarters. Uh, tell us, what, what's up with that? Well, uh, if we say NASA just found life on Mars, we're being a little bit, uh, getting out over our skis um, a, a little bit. This is um, possible life on Mars billions of years ago. We're not talking about life on Mars today, but what's really exciting about this is it's um it seems to be legitimately the best evidence we've found for something on mars that needs life to explain it so there's this rock called uh, chayava falls when you look at it it's got these weird spots that they call leopard spots because that's kind of kind of what it looks like and then they said hey that that's weird let's go up closer and, and with our analytical instruments see what those spots are made out of and they turn out to be these, these iron minerals, things called vivianite and grigite that you find on Earth. And where you find them on, our, on Earth, they're usually associated with, with microbes doing things to organic matter. And then they look at this spot and they analyze it and there, there are organics there. So there are, are organics, carbon stuff, and there are these minerals that on Earth are usually associated with life sort of using the energy uh, and and it, it's kind of what life leaves after its meal, you know. Oh, uh, <laughs> microbial poop is that what you want to call yes, it? Yes. <laughs> That's, it's it's what's excreted after the microbes eat. Uh, you you can have an organic soup where there's not life. You just have the ingredients that life needs. So when you said organics, it's carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. So the organics themselves don't tell you that there's life, but they still they get your attention. You go, okay, so. That's interesting. But then the organics in conjunction with these possible biogenic minerals make you go, hmm. <laughs> and so uh, presumably the fact that it's all in one place together indicates that the life was doing its thing in that one place. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's uh, it's uh, if, if they weren't caused by life, there's a couple other hypotheses for what could have caused them. It, it, it can be done if there's if there's high temperature reactions. So that was one idea. But then you look at other aspects of this rock and the chemistry seems to be telling you this was laid down in a low temperature environment. And then, okay, so and, and then it could be it could also uh, be done if there was if it was a heavily acidic environment. But then you look at other aspects of this rock and you go, no, it doesn't seem like it was a heavily acidic environment. So they've st they've sort of started to rule out the obvious other explanations and they're left with not only the biological explanation, but maybe the, the that's almost like the favorite explanation now, which is. So uh, this was uh, discovered by Perseverance, the, the, the SUV sized rover that was plunked down there some years ago. And why didn't any other experiment notice this? Yeah, we have not found these kinds of deposits anywhere else. So they're not all over the place on Mars. But then, of course, one thing we've learned from both our orbital and surface explorations of Mars is that Mars is a diverse planet with a lot of different kinds of locations. And so, you know, this is a particular location with a particular, these are sedimentary rocks in a um, place that, that had liquid water. So these things are not all over the place on Mars, but you gotta remember most of Mars we haven't explored. And the, the landing site for the rover as was surely true with other rovers, was very carefully selected to maximize the chance of finding life. So you're gonna go where there's a dried riverbed or lake bed or river delta, right? So I presume there's a lot of prior thinking where this is the fruits of that early work that people put in uh, in the reconnaissance. Oh, ab absolutely. I mean, this, this location was chosen, as you say, because it seemed promising. And you know that one one way of looking at this is, hey, that validates all those choices, all those site selection meetings, and you know, it's like, yes, we found it. Well, okay, we found something that that could be it. It's certainly something interesting. And by the way, another interesting thing about this location is that these sediments are some of the youngest sediments that uh, that Perseverance has has explored. They're not. I mean, they're still ancient. They're billions of years old. But of all the rocks that we've looked at, there's some of the youngest, meaning that if there's, this is an actual sign of ancient life, that that life might have been there for quite some time. It's it's There's much older signs of 
habitable environments than this particular one, which is on the young side from what we've explored. Wow. So, so when, 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 when are we going to see something crawl out of a hole <laughs> on Mars? <laughs> uh, We're pretty sure there's no life on Mars today, correct? Well, well, we don't know that. I mean, you know, I'm personally skeptical of life on Mars today, but in the astrobiology community, you will find a wide range of opinions on that. And, and my own personal skepticism, I have to temper with the fact that I have a lot of smart colleagues who are more optimistic about it. And that's okay. <laughs> um, but the fact is, if we find definite evidence of ancient life on Mars, and we haven't found it yet, but we found something promising. But to say we found... Call it a smoking gun, a smoking yeah, gun. If we, were, if we were really sure there was ancient life on Mars, that would probably increase our our optimism a little bit about finding extant life because if there was once life then maybe it could have evolved and found some hiding place when when the surface got so terrible yeah. and what about the underground possible aquifers that might still retain liquid water i don't know what would keep them liquid but no one is is denying the likelihood that there could be water deposits uh yeah. beneath the surface you know, almost surely somewhere underground on Mars, there's liquid water because we know there's water ice. And we know that as you go into the interior of a planet, of, of any planet, it gets warmer and warmer because of basic thermal physics. So at some point on Mars, there's a place that's warm and wet enough. So there's an aquifer. I think that's very likely. The question is, would that have the, you know, the, the energy and the nutrients and all the other stuff you'd need for life? And could life exist over billions of years in one little, you know, isolated outpost if it's not a sort of robust planetary biosphere like you have on Earth. That makes me skeptical, but I can't, I certainly can't say I know there's no life on Mars, and I think that we need to search for it. Okay, so since this is basically bacterial excrement, uh, can we expect to possibly extract DNA from it, or is that out of the question? I would say uh, that's unlikely because, I mean, imagine that this was an Earth rock that was billions of years old and you were finding the same kind of mineral trace of life. The fact, the idea of there being sort of intact genetic material that had survived, especially in, a, in a, an environment like, you know, Mars is being bathed in this cosmic radiation. So I would say, uh, you know. And lethal I, ultraviolet, yeah. The idea of, you know, sort of creating a Jurassic Mars Park out of <laughs> It would just be fun to know if it had any DNA at all and if it did it does it have anything in common with us oh, which if it did then we got panspermia on our hands just remind me about what that could be yeah no i mean that the question you're asking of course would be amazing if we found something intact enough uh to to understand its genetics because then yeah then we have that amazing question are we related to it yeah has it, has it arisen because rocks at one point uh, traveled between Earth and Mars, which we know they do naturally, and something hitchhiked along it, or is it actually an independent origin? That, you know, That's because we have Mar we have meteorites on Earth that were traceable to Mars, That's and funny. we didn't we didn't bring them here. So, so, so th these were Mars rocks blasted forth from some kind of asteroid, traveled through space all on their own, and what you would need are stowaway microbes that some would then survive. They have to be very hardy to do so. And the hardiest microbes that we all know about and talk about, of course, is the tardigrade, water bear, that you can't kill that thing. So is that still a prime candidate for having a, a, a stowed away on a rock from another planet? Well, you know, I, I, are you asking me if tardigrades are Martians? No, yeah, no, yeah. I didn't want to say it that explicitly. I was trying to get around that somehow. I mean, it, it is true that there are Earth organisms, the tardigrades being a great example, that, that seem like they would uh, survive um, short, at least short stints of space travel. Another interesting thing to ponder is the fact that at the time when these possible microbes were, were pooping out these minerals on Mars, the bombardment rates were higher early in the solar system. There was more stuff hitting the planets. And therefore, the chance that some rock with some of this stuff got blasted off of Mars and landed on Earth, uh, you know, it seems credible that, that that could have happened. So that would mean we would all be descendants of Martians. Well, uh, I know I know some people in particular that that <laughs> that's, that's, that's surely more true yeah. for them than others. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so remind us who what's the, who's the lead author on this paper? 
The lead author is Joel Horowitz at uh, Stony Brook University. It's a long list of authors because, you know, these these are big team efforts. Um, and so there's it's a cast of of, of dozens. But uh, but but he's the lead author. And um, yeah, the uh, the Perseverance team is, uh, you know, I think they're uh, they're. they're popping champagne today. So David, thanks for checking in with us on very short notice for this very important announcement from NASA. Absolutely. Nice talking to you, Neil. That's another installment of Star Talks. What's up with that? As always, keep looking up. Keep looking up.